keep a chicken run dry and why it's important. When we first got hens in 2016, I had the thought that we'd put our coop on the grass and that we'd move it around uh, maybe daily, every other couple of days to a different new patch of grass and that would keep the grass, grass thorough, thriving um, and no one spot would get too bare, too dug up. Well, I think if like, if you're like maybe my American relatives, my peanut butter loving um, relatives in America, and I still love peanut butter too. <laughs> if you've got a really big grass lawn, you're like a homestead. I was getting ideas from people who have homesteads, really big properties, acres. They can endlessly, you know, move their you know, chicken sledge all over a huge grass field. And of course the grass is going to look fine. I didn't really think about what it would be on like a mini tiny patch of grass. I just didn't consider it. I didn't think that was going to be a problem. I thought it was going to work. Wet runs are not nice for hens. They need a dependably dry place to come back and keep their feet clean and healthy. And have a dust bath. So when my family moved house in 2018, it was an opportunity for us to start fresh again with our chicken coop and make some changes about keeping the ground cover in our chicken run dry. And I'll share what we're doing now and hopefully that can help you plan for your chicken run too. Put a roof on top of the run. Put your chicken run, um, you need to protect it from horizontal rains. So if you put it in maybe a corner where it's near an outbuilding or a solid fence or you place plants, whether they're potted or grown in, um, like trees or shrubs, you want to protect it um, with those types of sidings or the position and where you put it in the garden. Separate the wet ground from the litter by laying down concrete paviors or using a pre-existing concrete slab as the foundation for your chicken run. This has been like the crucial change for us about keeping a consistently dry chicken run by separating the, the wet ground earth with the concrete and then on top of it our litter which stays dry. On top of your paviors or your concrete slab, add um, gritty sand, coarse sand, and topsoil. For us, in where we live in the world, uh, this mix is really good at absorbing moisture and releasing it. And we try to make it as deep as we can, like up to six inches. And we do top it up occasionally because when you when you we rake out the poo most days, it takes a little bit of sand and a little bit of topsoil out with the poo every time and so you do see it go down and then you just top it back up. Keep the litter loose. It can get compacted when I'm walking around the run or from horizontal rains that get in through the side. So occasionally I'll take a spade and I'll loosen it up and I'll flip it over. And dry litter is great for um, it can get like kicked up more easily over like chicken poo in the run and that reduces flies and reduces odor. Add siding along the base of your chicken run uh, to keep the deep litter from being kicked out through the wire mesh. We use currently concrete blocks around the edges and the deeper you can keep that litter and keep it in the run um, is better than a thin layer in terms of more air, more things and deeper for them to dig their feet can get in there nice and dry and loose. Deeper loose material will stay drier than a thin layer. Hi, I'm Beth from Garden City Chickens. Weekly I write a blog and I make a video about keeping backyard chickens in my little garden in the United Kingdom. So come that first winter, the grass was completely gone from that little area and it had turned to dirt and that dirt was wet and that became the mud and we try to manage it all winter in early spring by putting down mulch uh, by putting on a straw and that helped you know for a little bit but then the damp from the ground would rise back up into the mulch and in the straw and it would get muddy again the climate in wales um it's 
in the United Kingdom. It's uh, there's a lot of dampness and condensation in our mild temperature year round, and it's really lovely. I think I had a bad stereotype of it coming from the U.S. Like, ooh, it's cloudy and wet. Not like I had much to talk about coming from Ohio, where the winters could be very cloudy and cold. Um, but it's so lovely. Things are just green. There's like this greenness all year round in the hills. Um, you know, some plants continue to bloom and grow. It's just it's perfect weather almost for gardening. And I often am surprised when I don't even have to water my allotment garden in the summer because it's just so damp and wet. And so that's not great for a muddy run. <laughs> so only, the only time it would dry out this dirt patch now is if we had an unusually dry spell in Wales. We've all seen those pristine chicken coop photos online where you've got this coop on this pristine green grass lawn. Everything's new. The grass is fresh. Um, initially, that was my photo too when we got our, our coop and set it up for the first week. Um, those photos can be so misleading, I'll pre-warn you from my experience. <laughs> um, depending on the size of your garden um, and the size of your lawn and how you set up your chicken coop, um, just sticking it on grass in a small garden could be a really bad idea, <laughs> at least in our circumstances because of our climate. So my reality in the United Kingdom, in Wales where I live, I feel really fortunate to have a garden at all. And it's relatively a, a big garden compared, you know, to other gardens in the area. So I feel really fortunate. But my garden is nothing compared to the U.S. homesteads I was trying to learn from. And you guys over there, you're really lucky. You've got, you've got it good in ways you don't always appreciate until you don't have it anymore. What's the ground material like in your chicken run? Is it working for you? Is it working for the chickens? Feel free to comment below or send me a message. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you next week. Bye! <laughs>